I can confirm that there were three shooting victims. We have confirmed that two are deceased. One is in stable condition in a local hospital. The military tonight investigating today's deadly shooting at Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam. One of the victims survived today's shooting and remains in the hospital. Three others are dead, including the shooter. Good evening, I'm Mika Miyashima. And I'm Brent Inouye. Hearts are heavy tonight and our thoughts and prayers are with the families and friends of everyone impacted by the tragedy. The Navy reports the shooting happened at about 2.30 this afternoon at Dry Dock 2 in the shipyard. This video from one of our viewers just moments after the shooting. KTV 4's Eliza Larson spent most of the day outside of the main gate. She's still there tonight and joins us live with more. Eliza. Brenton and Mika, good evening. Yes, as you heard from the Rear Admiral, we have three victims of the shooting who have passed away, or excuse me, we have two victims of the shooting who have passed away. A third individual who died was the shooter in this incident. Now, the Rear Admiral did talk earlier today to reporters about that shooter, and he has confirmed that he is an active duty sailor assigned to the USS Columbia, which is a submarine currently docked here at Pearl Harbor. Now, he died because of an impaired, um, an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. He has not been identified, nor has the two other victims who have passed away or the remaining victim who is in a hospital here on Oahu. We haven't, we were first initially told that he suffered, um, he was in stable condition, but we, his condition may have changed. We'll keep you posted on that. Now we have been learning only a few details about what went on inside the base today because our cameras were not allowed. At this time though, we do not have a motive for the shooting. And this is what the Rear Admiral uh, Rob Chadwick had to say about that. We have no indication yet whether they were targeted or if it was a random shooting. Uh, more details certainly to come, uh, but we'll be looking at every aspect of it, uh, what lessons we can learn, what additional you know, security uh, procedures would be needed. But, uh, but again, we're still very early in the investigation. Now, again, the military will not release the identities of the shooter or the victims until next of kin are notified. Rear Admiral Chadwick, on behalf of the U.S. Navy, did offer his condolences to the families of the victims and all of those involved as well. Now, there are resources available for those affected by today's events. There's counseling service as well as numbers for military personnel and their families to contact if they're needed, as well as people who are employed here, civilians who are employed here on the base. Additionally, uh, naval, the Naval Shipyard says all non-essential shipyard personnel working on third shift tonight should not report to work. Essential personnel should be here. However, again, there have been several deaths in this incident. Two civilian shipyard workers who were here on base today have died. The shooter killed himself, apparently, and there is another victim who remains in a hospital. This is an ongoing investigation, according to the military, but we'll bring you the very latest once that information becomes available. Reporting live, Eliza Larson, KITV4, Island News. Thank you, Eliza. And Rear Admiral did mention that the alleged shooter was a sailor on the USS Columbia. This is file footage of the submarine. It's the last of the 688 class and was commissioned in 1995. It was docked in Pearl Harbor for standard maintenance. New tonight, the shipyard commander, Captain Greg Burton, sent out this statement today saying, quote, Today we lost two of our shipyard civilians with another seriously injured in a tragic event this afternoon. I know that no words will convey the full measure of sorrow from today's tragedy. This loss will be felt throughout our shipyard Ohana, Greater Shipyard and Navsea Family Submarine Force and the Navy as a whole. And Governor David Ige issued a statement today saying, quote, I join in solidarity with the people of Hawaii as we express our heartbreak over this tragedy and concern for those affected by the shooting, end quote. The White House also reached out to offer assistance, and the state is standing by to assist as well. And this statement from Honolulu Mayor Kirk Caldwell tonight saying, quote, we share in the sorrow of today's tragic shooting at the Pearl Harbor Naval, Naval Shipyard and are thankful for the actions of our federal and state partners, as well as the city's first responders who rushed to the scene. Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam is home base for both the Navy and the Air Force, and more than 66,000 people work or live on base. With the lockdown in effect, they weren't allowed to go home and get to the job site. Some were told to take shelter during the active shooter situation. Just before 3 this afternoon, this urgent text message was sent out warning people on base about the incident. It forced some to 
stay in place for up to two hours. In the moments after the lockdown were lifted, KITV4 Island News spoke with a woman who works at a bowling alley on base and two service members trying to get off of base. I was actually about to leave when I was told to lock the doors because we have an active shooter. At first I thought it was an a alarm, like a, like a drill. And then I was told it's real. So first thing I did was call my mom and let her know. We're on our way out in an Uber and then uh, he just kind of Everything was on lockdown. We heard the intercom, so we, the gates were closed, so we just kind of hung around out there. The all clear was given just after 4 o'clock this afternoon. And the chaos on base just three days before the 78th anniversary of Japan bombing Pearl Harbor. Now, security is expected to be tight during Saturday's remembrance ceremony. This map shows the area where today's shooting happened in relation to where the Pearl Harbor Visitor Center is located. Start time on Saturday morning is 7.50 and the USS William Lawrence is scheduled to make a pass and review and there's flyovers planned for both the Air Force and Hawaii Air National Guard.